20 Questions, the question and answer program everyone enjoys, presented by Menon for Men. The Menon Company, makers of Menon Skin Bracer, America's most popular aftershave lotion for that wake-up tingle. Menon spray deodorant for men, the spray deodorant that checks odor and perspiration round the clock. And the makers of the Menon Shave Creams for the smoothest shave of your life. I like men who use Menon. How about you? And now, here's your man about questions, Bill Slater. Thank you. A very hearty welcome again, all of you, to 20 Questions, the absolutely unrehearsed animal, vegetable, and mineral game that everybody is playing. Now, briefly, this is the way we play the game of 20 Questions. You friends of ours out there send in subjects for our expert questioners over here to identify by asking me not more than 20 questions. Now, we have a rather unique way of keeping track of the score as we go along. We do it on our Menon scoreboard. It just so happens that there are exactly 20 letters in the expression Menon products for men. And as each question is asked, the letter lights up, and as we go along, we know where we stand. Now, if your subject is used here on 20 Questions, you'll receive a beautiful genuine leather jewel case if you're a woman, or a genuine leather traveling case if you're a gentleman, and each will be filled with a complete line of men and products for men. Now, if our panel doesn't get to your subject in 20 Questions, and sometimes they don't, you know, here's a special grand prize that you get. The book that everybody wants, the new Thumb Index Columbia Encyclopedia, containing six million words covering seven billion years of history and progress. And that's right much coverage, isn't it? And so that you friends of ours at home there will always know what our experts are trying to guess, our men and mystery voice will tell you what the subject is. A poster informs our studio guests. Naturally, we're not going to tell our questioners. Who are Fred Vandeventer, famous news analyst, Florence Renard, well-known musician, Herb Palacy, radio and motion picture producer, Johnny McPhee, our teenage student. And our special guest tonight is a very lovely lady, who is one of the stars of the Metropolitan Opera Company, Miss Eleanor Stieber. <laughs> Miss uh, Stieber, as you can tell by our audience, we're delighted to have you with us on 20 Questions. Thank you tonight. very much. I'm very happy to be back again. We never, uh, we don't quite so often have such a combination of beauty and brains as you represent on the panel tonight, Miss Stieber. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Slater. You and with two-thirds of the front row filled with beautiful women, you boys will have to keep pumping to hold your own. <laughs> yeah. What, what, Eleanor Stieber, are you going to be singing next at the Metropolitan? Oh, my next prefer performance will be Manon, Masnay's Manon. Now, how about that tutti fruity? I oh. heard it. I oh, heard I beg your pardon. Now, that you're quite right. Cosy fan tutte. You see, I've already gone beyond uh, <coughs> cosy fan tutte, although uh, that is coming up on Monday night. <laughs> What's cosy fan tutte mean? Well, uh, the translation is uh, all women do it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's it. I, I thought that was an opera, isn't it? They <laughs> do you learn something every day. I didn't know that. All Let's right. get in here on our first this subject. This should be an answer for the, yes. this should be for the quiz program. That should be a yes. question I perhaps wouldn't ask again, Miss Stever. I heard another translation of it. What difference does it make? <laughs> well, I, do. I, I heard another know. translation. Well, hold your translations, boys. Let's play a little Don't bit of 20 questions, Don't take the soap out of the bathroom. <laughs> We have a subject here to begin with tonight that was sent in by Augusta Holmes of Astoria, Oregon. Uh, she's going to receive a beautiful genuine leather jewel case because we're using her subject, and it'll be filled for that man in her life with a complete line of men and products for men. This subject, the starter of the evening, is vegetable. This is the men and mystery voice off stage in a soundproof room. Tonight's first subject is found in the Bible. It's the bread you cast upon the waters. All right, they know at home. Now let the studio audience here see what the subject is. And you all see if you can get it, you five. We're the only ones who don't know what it is. See if you can get it in 20 questions. Herb? Is this an edible vegetable? Or like tutti frutti? <laughs> <laughs> well, ask one question, Herb. But well, is it edible? The subject is edible. That'll do for that. John? <laughs> is it a garden vegetable? That you're after? Yes. No. Van? Is it a fruit? No. Florence? Uh, has this been uh, cooked? Yes. Got another question, Florence? Uh, is it any kind of uh, grain? Yes. Is it uh, cereal? That you're after? Well, I mean, is it used as a cereal when we eat no, it? Cereal, no. Cereal, you know, something no. that runs every week. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of friends run every week and never get anywhere. Johnny McPhee. Is this type of thing, does this type of thing come from a bakery? Yes. Johnny? Well, is it ordinary bread? Yes. Van? Is it fictional? 
I would say yes. Florence? Is it uh, biblical? Yes. Cast your bread upon the waters and it shall return. <laughs> get going on our next subject. They look hot again tonight, friends, but I have the wherewithal with which to slow them down. You can count on me to stump them, I hope. <laughs> this next subject was sent by Mrs. Lorraine Sutter, who lives in Hawthorne, New Jersey. And Miss Sutter, we're sending to you a beautiful genuine leather jewel case. And for the man in your life, you'll find it filled with a complete line of men and products for men, including men and spray deodorant for men. That's the spray deodorant that contains Permatec to really check odor and perspiration. Now, this subject, our second of the evening, is mineral and vegetable. This is a subject way out in the Pacific Ocean, the Sandwich Islands. All right, they've been told at home. Unveil it to the studio audience. Bit of a stir because I think we're going to have a fight on this one, Van. Is this manufactured? No. Florence? Uh, can it be located geographically? Yes. Is it in the United States? No. Herb? Well, is it in the Western Hemisphere at all? Yes. John? Is it... In North America? No. Helen Steber? Is it a uh, uh, defense product? No, it's not a defense project. I mean, is it used in the process of, uh, of uh, war making or that sort of thing? Well, uh, not as a regular thing, Miss Steber. I'm trying to answer your question and keep away from giving you any information. <laughs> is it in South America? No. No. Herb? Well, is it in any part of England? No. No. Johnny? Is it, is it in the British Isles? No. Florence? Is it, in, uh, is it on an island? The subject on an island? Is it... Uh, partly. Partly. Charge. Is it a group of islands? It's a group of islands. That's uh, 11 questions. Who has the next one? Miss Steber is sneaking a hand up here. Is it uh, in the Pacific? Yes. Keep going, Miss Steber. <laughs> is it uh, by any chance the Hawaiian Islands? That's not quite the name by which I would like to have the uh, Hawaiian Islands Keep called. Keep going, but take me along. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, let's see what Florence has in no, her mind. No, I, I want to ask that. Now, let me think. Well, now, it. just a minute. Uh, hmm? did, Where are you going? Did, did, we, did we establish there that what we're after is the Hawaiian Islands under a different name? That's what I said. Florence? Would it be the South Sea Islands? No. Johnny? Let's see where we stand. You've used 14, you've got six to go. I don't understand. Do you want the Hawaiian Islands named or part of them? Or whatever? I want the Hawaiian Islands, but I want them by a, a name other than the Hawaiian well, Islands. He wants them in a grass skirt, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not a bad twist, Herb. The Ms. Steber? Does the word Polynesian have something to do with it? No, no, no. 15 questions, five left. Van? Do you want a geographic name as distinguished from a, a uh, uh, popular name? Yeah. You want an actual geographic name? This is a geo has been a geographical name for the Hawaiian Islands. And oh, it's yes. not unpopular either, as far as that goes. Yeah, I... And you all have four questions left. And are you certainly hanging now on tenterhooks? We're Herb hanging, got his head in these hands. It's like we missed a boat here. Mm -hmm. uh, We're getting to... in Steber and Steber. I sure would love to be back in the Hawaiian Islands. <laughs> I think we will, yeah. Oh, boy. Right. Well, you want to give up? No. You've got oh, four right. questions yeah, you could use, but I don't hear any questions. Are, uh, I, I'll ask another question. Try it. Uh, is, this, is this term commonly used today? The term involved in the previous yes. name of the islands is commonly used today. You have now but three questions left. Oh. Anybody want to try them? I wish I had to study geography better. But it's yeah. a geographic name. Well, it's a name applied to... I know, but is it a, is, is it a name that you would... Uh, what I was asking a while ago... Is it a name that you would normally find on a map describing the Hawaiian Islands? Not now. Miss Stevens? How many more questions do we have? Uh, two. Johnny? Is there, is the word south or southern in this thing? No. No. You've got one left. <sighs> Gee, you're sitting I, on I the side. right on the end, end of my tongue. I know it. Yeah, but you, you can't keep it, it there. It's on the map now. Not unless it's an old map. You got I one forget. question to go. Why I forget. That old? You know we're looking try at an old map right now. I forget. Okay, I'm going to have to send out the grand prize to Miss Lorraine Sutter of Hawthorne, New Jersey. She stumped you, and she gets the grand prize, which is the new Columbia Encyclopedia that belongs in everybody's home. In its over 2,000 pages, you'll find the subjects discussed on 20 questions, and you'll find many more subjects. You might have even found the subject by which Miss Sutter stumped our panel, the Sandwich Island. <laughs> You 
you're so quick on the bread and so slow on the sandwiches. <laughs> I'm not going to send any of you out for meat, I can okay. tell you that. Our next subject comes to us from Mrs. C.R. Frank of Amelia, Ohio. Miss Frank, we're sending you a beautiful genuine leather jewel case. You'll find it filled with a complete line of men and products for men for that favorite man of yours. This uh, subject here is a toughie. It's vegetable and sometimes a bit animal. This subject is found in a well-known expression. It's the hotcakes in going like hotcakes. They've been told at home. Let the uh, studio audience look at it. Subject is vegetable and sometimes a bit animal. And everybody has his hand. At least all the men have their hands up. Herb? I can put my is this something edible, too? Uh, yeah. Is everything tonight going to be something edible? And uh, I'm on a diet. This is the third <laughs> item. <laughs> I won't diet. answer. I won't answer that, Herb. Sufficient <laughs> unto the question is the evil there. I see. Johnny? <laughs> Would you eat this at the main course of a meal? Yes. Yes, you could, Van. Is this some particular kind of a sandwich? No. No, you still got that sandwich thing on your mind when you didn't eat well, it. Well, you went mind. from bread to a sandwich. I thought we might go to something else. Yeah, it sounds sort of crummy. Uh, Florence? Uh, <laughs> is this uh, the vegetable part in this? Is it an ordinary garden vegetable? That's involved in this? Yes. No, not what you normally call an ordinary garden vegetable. You have now used four questions, according to our men in the scoreboard. You've got 16 left. Eleanor Stevens. Is it a dish something like a goulash? No, it is not something like a goulash. <laughs> you like that? Yes. No wonder you're on a diet. Well, she and I used to eat that goulash down in West Virginia, eh, Eleanor? Tastes Mighty good in the shadow of those hills. Van? Does the vegetable part grow above the ground? Yeah. Yep. Johnny? Is it a fruit? No. Seven questions, 13 left. Lawrence? Is it a grain? Any kind of grain? That's involved? Well, that is involved in the subject. It is involved. That's eight questions, 12 left. Van? Is it some kind of bread with the, that we're after? No, it's not generally called some kind of bread that you're after. You now have but 11 questions left. Lawrence? Has this been baked? No. No. Herb? Is it a cracker or crackers involved? No. They're baked. No, my friend, Florence. But, this, but is it any kind of a griddle cake? Yes. Or anything you fry like that? Yes. Is it a corn cake? Well, uh, it could be. You want another name for it? That's 13 questions, seven to go. Now, let's uh, see. I think Johnny had his hand up first. Well, is it just an ordinary pancake? Well, a lot of people call it pancake. Eleanor Stevie? Is it French toast? No, not French toast. <laughs> you dipped into the wrong thing that time. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, Van. Is it a flapjack? Flat well, some people call them flapjacks, but they're not flapjacks, uh... Oh! Eleanor? Is it a Cripsy Zip? Oh, say, my That's heavens. a two dollar pancake. Yes. <laughs> Shall we tango? How many yes. more have we got left? Then? You have but three left, Ooh. according to your men in scoreboard. Ooh. Florence? Well, um, is the thing we want in here descriptive? That is, is it, uh, are there two words, like a fried cake or something like that? Are there two words? Two there? words are involved uh, in what you're after. Um, uh, Van? Is it a griddle okay. cake? Yes, but that's not the name we use. Buckwheat cake? No, that's not a buckwheat cake. How about hot cake? That would have been it, but that's 21, and you have to tell me what hot cakes, my friend. Hmm? They were playing They're 21 going like hot cakes. That's yeah. question number 22. He's oh. a good man. Hot cakes and going like hot cakes. Oh. Well, now, Mrs. C.R. Frank in Amelia, Ohio, we're going to send you the grand prize, mm -hmm. too. Take a look at it if you get a chance. It's that wonderful Columbia Encyclopedia. It has all the answers and... A tremendous amount of information and uh, write-ups and stories and stuff in it for you. That wonderful thumb index Columbia Encyclopedia you get. Well, that's the second grand prize we have given away here tonight. You people aren't eating so well. <laughs> Our next subject, however, falls into Jack Gregson's department. Let's see what he's brought along with him to illustrate it. Jack? Yeah, thanks, Bill. How are you, folks? Here's a spray gun. Now, it's the kind that you use to apply paint. But of course, you see them almost anywhere where there's a lot of painting being done. And quite naturally, they're the uh, reason. You see, a spray spreads evenly, smoothly, and it saves a lot of time, too. Well, you know, the same identical thing, fellas, is true when it comes to applying a deodorant. That is why when Menon designed a deodorant that was made just especially for men, they designed a spray deodorant. Here it is. It's called Menon Spray Deodorant. You just remove the top of the handy, unbreakable bottle, you squeeze it, and it sprays, giving it easy and thorough coverage. And the protection is long-lasting, too, because Menon Spray Deodorant contains Permatec, the amazing ingredient that protects you around the clock. So 
Make sure that you stay safer longer. Get Menon spray deodorant for men. I like men who use menins. Okay, now here we go with our questioners down, to the score being two to one against them. We're moving into a subject sent to us by Helen Hagen of Bethel, Tennessee. Miss Hagen, we're sending you a beautiful genuine leather jewel case, and for your favorite man, you'll find it filled with a complete line of those wonderful menin products for men. This subject, still going to give them a battle, is vegetable. This is the menin mystery voice again, telling you at home what the subjects are. And this one is animal crackers. Unveil the subject to the studio audience, please, Miss Shepard. Okay, bit of a stir again. Here we go, Johnny. Is it, is it or is it made of fruit or garden vegetables? No. You covered too much territory for once, didn't you, John? For the no, we got a lot. <laughs> well, you may have that. Van? Is it green in any form? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Lawrence? Is this uh, in any kind of fiction? Uh, well, this could be involved in fiction. I remember some fiction that it was involved in, but uh, it isn't necessary. Charge for it, will you, Gary, old boy? We have now used well, three so questions. What she meant was, Van? could you identify it that way? You didn't tell her anything. Well, I told her it appeared that way in some kinds of fiction, which is a tantamount to saying if she knows the fiction, it'll identify her. Van? Would you eat this at a regular meal? Well, you could, but it isn't generally thus consumed. Van? Is it a baked grain? Yes, yes. Lawrence? Uh, is it sweet? Yes. Van? Wouldn't be an ice cream cone. No. Huh. Nice thought, though. Love them. Johnny? You say it is baked? Yes. Is it bread? No. Oh, it's Nine, sweet. Eight questions have been used. Twelve left. Miss Steva? Well, uh, let me put myself out on a limb again and ask you if it's a dessert. Well, uh, it would be a fairly skimpy dessert, but it might better belong at that part of the meal than any other part. Florence? Well, is it a cookie? Not exactly. Any kind of a, well, any kind of a small cake or a cookie, let's put it that way. Well, uh, sort of, sort of. <laughs> Herb? Is the word biscuit the word you want? No, the word biscuit is not in there. That's 12 questions used, eight left. Van? Well, uh, going back to Florence's question, did you specifically answer that what we're after is either a cookie or a cake and that those words are used? I didn't say that those words were used. Well, are they? Either one of them? No. No. Florence? There's a candy. No, it's not candy. You have now used 13, 14, <coughs> six left. Scoreboard, one behind. Alan and Steve. Is it a saying? Uh, no, <coughs> no. Is it used in a, in a quotation or is it used as a... Uh, <coughs> not, not primarily. Once in a while I've seen it as a something other than what it really is, but not usually. Johnny? How about a donut? Well, how about a donut? Shall we have coffee with it? I get the <laughs> hole in the donut. That's not it, Johnny. You've now used 16 questions, four left. No kind of candy. What'd you say, Florence? I no, I was just repeating that it was Van? kind of candy. Have we established that this is a fairly small object that we're after? I don't think you have. All, All right, I'll ask that question. Is it a fairly small object that we are after? Yeah, it's not very big. Not very big. Not very big. You've got three questions left. John? Is this thing baked on a large sheet or tin and subsequently cut up into smaller areas? I would think that would be the way they would do it. Now, you have two questions left. Johnny looks hot. Come uh, out of the kitchen, Johnny. Why, is the predominant flavor of the sweet chocolate? No. Well, I lose on that one. Then. Yes, you do, and there's only one question left. And, but, but it is crumbled up, usually baked in a large sheet and then crumbled up. Is that what you said? Then cut up, he said, and I would say I imagine that's the way they do it. Elmer Stevie? I was going to say, is it a bonbon? No, 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 no. Well, gee whiz. I hope they've got a lot of those Columbia encyclopedias because we're shipping them out here tonight. Ms. Helen Hagen of Bethel, Tennessee, you're the next person to get one of those Columbia encyclopedias. You'll find uh, that it has over 2,000 pages in it, and it's got a lot of information, a tremendous amount covering a long span of time. It's an encyclopedia that ought to be in everybody's home. We need it tonight. You sure could use it tonight. The subject was animal. Crackers. Animal. Crack. Crackers. Animal crackers. <laughs> We're giving them the gazotska tonight, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I have a subject sent now by Miss M. Davidson, who lives in Lowell, Massachusetts. And Miss Davidson, we're sending you this beautiful, genuine leather jewel case. 
and for your favorite man, a complete line of those wonderful men and products for men, including, I'm glad to say, men and cream hair oil to keep your hair neatly and naturally in place. This subject is animal. The famous sports writer, Grantland Rice. All right, let the audience see it. Now see if you can get this. It's not easy. Van? Is it a whole animal? It's a whole animal. Van? Human. Human. John? Living. Living. John? An American? Yes. Van? A man. A man. Herb? Is he the name of a food or something to eat? Yes. Well, thank you, William. Thank oh, my. you. That's the sharpest <laughs> question you've asked tonight, John? Is he in the government? No. Florence? Is he in entertainment of any kind? A form thereof. Concerned therewith. Eight questions, 12 left. Van? Is he connected with sports? Yeah. Van? Is he connected with a game played with a ball? Uh, yes, he's connected with that. Yeah. Elmer Stevie? Um, would his uh, name by any chance be Graham? Oh, <laughs> what a cracker. No? That's a very good test, though. Yeah, were you thinking of Otto Graham? No, Bill Cleveland? Graham. Is oh. he a sports uh, announcer or Graham... Uh, Graham McNamee? Graham McNamee or something well, like Graham that? Well, Graham isn't working at it anymore. Oh, really? Oh, no. I'm, well, um, I remember that. Well, it was all right. It was a nice little <laughs> chat we had about days gone by. Johnny? Is it his first name that no. is important? No. You have now used 12 questions. You've got eight left. Van? Is the, is the food, uh, uh, which represents his name, is that an animal food? No. No. John? Is the sport baseball? Uh, partly. That's one. That's the sport. You now have uh, used 14. You mean, You've got you, six. Did you say partly? Yeah. Van? Is it, is it a name taken from some grain or some product made of grain? Yes. Yes, Van. Is that a baked product? Sometimes, but not usually. Oh, I Herb? I know one baseball player, Zach Weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zach Weed. Left you holding that bag. Remember it? <laughs> yes, but this isn't Zach Weed. You have now used 17 questions. You've got three left. <laughs> All right. Try it, Van. We're not doing very well tonight. <laughs> oh, no. That's the overstatement of the evening, uh, brother. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. Uh, you say it's not... Oh. Oh, I'll uh, Grantland Rice. Does it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, they saved their honor at least that much. And now for our next subject, Mr. Jack Gregson has a guessing game for us to play. Can you tell us about it, please, Jack, old boy? Well, sure, Bill. This is a variation of the old familiar guessing game here. However, in this game, you just can't guess wrong because it's about men and skin bracer. Uh, come on in, I'll show you what I mean. If you choose an aftershave lotion, fella, for its tingle, then this is what to get. Because men and skin bracer always comes through with a refreshing wake-up tingle that picks you up and just makes you feel good all over. Now, if razor nicks are kind of your problem, then... You win with Men and Skin Bracer because Men and Skin Bracer helps to heal those tiny razor nicks and it really makes your face feel good. Now, if you're kind of particular about the aroma of your aftershave lotion, then once again, you win with Men and Skin Bracer because Men and Skin Bracer has a grand He-Man aroma that the girls really go for. So, no matter which one you pick, you always pick the winner with Menon Skin Bracer, America's most popular aftershave lotion. So, just look for this. It's the green and white package at your favorite drug counter. And get Menon Skin Bracer for a wake-up tinkle, to help heal tiny razor nicks, and for that He-Man aroma the girls will pick every time. I like men who use men and... Well, here we are ready for our quickies. And Ellen and Steve, they go this way, as you undoubtedly remember. I don't count the number of questions you ask. I race you against time. You get 60 seconds after I say go, and you all shoot your questions as fast as you can. And the usual prizes that apply to the rest of the show apply to the quickies, too. Our first quickie tonight comes from Mrs. Mary Grope of Laporte, Indiana, and it's Animal. The television comedian, Imogene Coca. 
All right, they know at home from the mystery voice. See if you all can get it in just 60 seconds after I say, on your mark, get set, go. Eleanor Stieber. Is it a human? It's a human. Florence. Living? Living, right. Van. Man. What? Man. Nope. John. An American woman? Yep. Herb. Is she in the theater or in the art? Yeah. John. The movie actress? No. Is Florence. she an actress at all? Is this theater? Not this theater, and she is an actress. She's on Broadway now. No. Is, no. She, is she still appearing as an actress? Oh, sure. I'll say. Is she a blonde? Nope. Does she, she have food in her name? Uh, not exactly, but there's a push in that direction. Is she a brunette? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, is she a dramatic it. actress? No, not what you call it. No, she's not a dramatic actress. Is she a singer? Uh, not primarily. Is Ellen she fat? Steve. No, she's not fat. <laughs> Florence? Is she a comedian? Yep. And she is on Broadway now? No. Oh, I understand. No. Uh, uh, Burns, Gracie. Uh, no, no. You've got 10 seconds left. Um, Say, what a night. Uh, we'll Field. remember this one. No, you've got three seconds left. Two left. Time is up. And so to Mrs. Mary Grope of LaPorte, Indiana, goes the grand prize, the Columbia Encyclopedia. Uh, congratulations to you, Ms. Grope. The subject was Imogene Coca. Coca. Oh. Second quickie here comes from R.C. Zimmerman of Parkersburg, West Virginia, and this subject is animal. The chocolate soldier. All right, on your mark, get set, go, Herb. Is this a prize fighter? No, this is not a prize fighter. I, I thought maybe it was kid chocolate. Is it all am <laughs> animal? What'd you say, Florence? Florence? Is it fictional? Yeah. The chocolate soldier. That does it! This, uh, this next quickie here comes from Hen K. Lloyd, who lives in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, and it is Animal. And now, General Hershey. Let the audience see it. Get a good look at it, audience. Okay. <laughs> On your mark, get set, go. Van. Has this got a chocolate in it? No. No. Is no. it human? It's human. Johnny? Is it fictional? No, really. Man. Man? Living? Yep. General Hershey. General Hershey! <laughs> You sort of sweetened up things toward the close there. <laughs> That's about all the time we're going to have tonight for 20 questions. Thanks Come a lot. the dessert. <laughs> right. Well, I'll well, dessert you now. Miss Steve, like we're off the... Set. I really it's feel as if pretty. I should really get off this diet after this evening's performance. Well, don't let anything worry you. <laughs> don't worry, Ellen. I'd like, to re sing either. I'd like to remind our friends at home we're running out of time, children. I'd like to remind you all at home we'll be back this way again next week, so be sure to send in your 20 question subjects, and this is the way you do it. You send them one to a postcard, please, to Menon, M-E-N-N-E-N, -N -N, Menon, 20 questions, Box 308, New York 46. Box 308, New York 46. All selections will be made by our judges, and in case of similarity or duplication, the one bearing the earliest postmark will be chosen. All entries become our property. Next week, Fred Vandeventer, Lawrence Renard, Herb Palacy, and Johnny McPhee will be joined by our guest panelists. Now, this is Bill Slater with our producer, Gary Stevens, and our director, Harry Coyle, saying for men and men for 20 questions, good night to all of you. We'll be looking for you next week at the same time. And remember, I like men who use men and... <laughs> Hundreds of mothers made a hidden name test on two leading brands of baby powder. Can A contain Menin? Menin Baby Powder 1. More mothers preferred Menin for fineness, smoothness, and fragrance. <laughs> I preferred it too. Prove this preference for yourself with Menin Baby Powder. <laughs>